All right, good evening. My name is Perry. I'm a sailor and a boat builder. Uh, right now it's 10.36 p.m. on a Tuesday night, August 10th, 2021, in beautiful San Diego, California. Um, I wanted to talk a little about the effectiveness of painting your anchor uh, or even painting your chain. Now, I was researching this a bit lately and a lot of what I was reading was saying that it's a waste of time to paint your anchor um, because it's just going to cover up the bare metal and um, it won't stop any rust from coming. The rust will just come up from underneath the paint. You're going to be constantly repainting and uh, it's just a waste of time. And I was thinking back uh, in my experience, and I didn't find that to be true. In 2009, I purchased a 31-foot Cape Dory uh, sailboat, and uh, it was right when I was getting out of the Navy at, at the time, and I was about to begin a year and a half of living on the boat and cruising the Caribbean, all the way, all the way from Norfolk, Virginia, down um, the eastern seaboard to Miami to the Bahamas a lot of Caribbean islands down to one of the last in the Caribbean island chain Grenada and then all the way back the anchor that the boat came with was a 45 pound hinged CQR anchor now I've heard people say that you know these are kind of old-fashioned and you should get rid of them but I want to say during that whole trip I always anchored on that anchor and I don't recall ever dragging anchor with that it was very good the anchor came painted white with a lot of rust on it or it had some rust streaks and while I was working on the body on the uh, bottom of the boat a buddy of mine who wanted to help out um, I gave him the task of grinding off all that white paint back to bare metal and that's what he did. We got it down to bare metal. Now at this time, uh, I was doing a short shore tour with Destroyer Squadron 2 in Norfolk, Virginia, Desron 2. And uh, one of the little projects I did was set up this static display of a massive anchor and two bollards, which hopefully you could still see today if you go take a tour of um, Naval Base Norfolk. Um, and what we did was um, wire brush those uh, equipment and then put on this green navy paint we had and um, then we covered it with some haze gray paint and we had leftover paint um, from this because we had borrowed it from one of our ships in the squadron so I was able to use some of it and um, after we got my anchor down to bare metal I put this uh, green rust preventative paint on it and then uh, I covered it with um, a more carbon gray color paint. I think I just added some black to the navy haze gray to set it apart a little. And um, after a year and a half living on the boat and um, anchoring every night, unless I was sailing, um, I was at anchor on that anchor. And when I came back, there was no rust on that anchor. I never had to repaint it during the trip. It performed great. And um, I should also mention, I don't recall ever dragging anchor. And people say the CQR anchor, the plow, is kind of old fashioned because, and you would think it makes sense. A plow is designed to push through the dirt, right? So it makes more sense to have the much more common now, a uh, spade anchor, which goes in like a shovel and should hold you there better. And I even think for my next boat, I would like to have a spade type anchor. But I will say that the plow performs really well, um, even though it, it does make sense that it shouldn't perform as well. It should kind of plow through the earth, whereas the spade anchor should dig in better. Um, and that logic makes sense to me, so I will go to a spade anchor. 
Um, but at any rate, I had good results with my plow, so don't feel bad too bad if that's what came with your boat. Um, if you have a good weight and good chain, it's probably going to hold you in a lot of harsh conditions. And I had a 50 feet of 5 16 inch chain, galvanized chain, and then attached to hundreds and hundreds of feet of nylon. Um, usually I didn't use more than 20 to 50 feet of nylon. Um, unless it was really blowing, I might pay out a lot more scope. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so recently, I was perusing Craigslist, and I saw 20 feet of 3 8 inch steel chain. And um, it was only $40, so I met the guy, and um, he was a kind of proud, retired guy. He'd been using these chains for lifting Caterpillar engines out of big equipment. And uh, he had taken good care of his equipment. It was, uh, you know, it was oiled slightly and not a bit of rust. And I asked him, you know, was it galvanized or anything like that? And he said, no, no, it'll rust on you. Um, you have to take care of it. So I said, okay, I paid him the money. It seemed like a very good deal. Took it home. And I figured what I'd do is paint it. And, you know, again, when I looked it up, People are saying it might be a waste of time, but in my experience, I think it could hold up and um, it'll be an experiment. We'll see. And um, it's really no harm if it doesn't. I could, I could always um, repaint or sell it to someone who's just going to use it on their trailer or whatever. Um, so what did I do? Um, I washed it two times in a bucket with dish soap um, and a dish scrubber. So two times over, I went over the whole length of chain. Um, I then rinsed it off and gave it a bath in cleaning vinegar for about four hours. And I used about a half cup of vinegar um, to a gallon of water. Picked up this cleaning vinegar at Home Depot I was just going to use white vinegar from the grocery store. I didn't know this stuff existed, but um, this is not for consuming. It looked like strong stuff, so I thought I'd try it out. So uh, after the vinegar bath, I rinsed it off and I let it dry in the sun, um, suspended on some saw horses. And I was surprised, even in the California sun, it probably took a good two hours to dry because of where the links connect. They hold some water in there, but it dried. Um, and when it was dry, I hung it up from my garage um, roof and I used this Rust-Oleum primer. Um, it says fast drying, any angle spray, add twice the protection to bare metal previously painted or sound rusted surfaces. High output tip. Um, and I followed the, the instructions um, the best I could. Um, I had read that you had to do a kind of self etching um, primer, but I couldn't find any at Home Depot. And this stuff said it was good on bare metal, so I thought, okay, I'll give it a try just to use a primer. Um, after good coating of primer, it says that immediately you can apply top coat. So I did essentially three coats of this paint and um, used pretty much, feels like I used three fourths or more of this can. It's Rust Oleum Gloss Protective Enamel, Superior Coverage and Durability, Sunrise Red. Um, I think it looks pretty cool and uh, should be easy to see on the bottom if you're somewhere where the sand is white and uh, the water's clear. Um, so even spraying from several angles on the chain while it was suspended, I found it pretty difficult to, um, you know, get all inside the chain and especially where the links connect. 
I mean, it's tough to get in there. Maybe I need to use a paintbrush instead of spray. But um, I think it still looks good and I think it'll provide some good protection. I'd be really curious to see after six months of use or a couple good long trips how it looks. Uh, the next thing I found online was on OfferUp and it was a Navy stockless anchor. Um, it says stamped right on there that it was made in Michigan, only $25. I had a fair amount of rust, um, but it came off quite easily with a steel, steel brush. Um, the owner was a guy in his late 40s maybe, and he said <clears throat> his father had used it uh, for boating up in Michigan. So I thought it was pretty cool to have something that had been in his family a long time. <clears throat> and he seemed pleased that I was going to use it for boating and not just put it in the garden, you know. and. Um, so what am I going to use this anchor for? Um, you know, it looks antique and I like, I'm a Navy guy. I like the Navy look. So I wanted it um, for some of those reasons. But also I had been looking for a weight. I like to hang a weight between where your chain meets your nylon anchor road. Help to keep that chain on the seabed and keep the pull of your anchor um, parallel to the seabed. Um, but when I was just looking for metal weights or thinking about making some kind of cement weight out of cement poured in a bucket with uh, some kind of shackle attached, it just made more sense to use a, a real iron anchor. And here was this one for only 25 bucks. Um, but other than using it as a weight between your anchor and your nylon, I think it would make a good just kind of um, lunchtime anchor, especially if you use 20 feet of 3 8 inch chain, which is a good weight. Um, I think that can hold you in a lot of conditions, unless you get really strong waves and wind. Probably that anchor is going to dig in and stay right where you put it. Um, obviously, if I was going to stay somewhere longer or leave the boat, or expecting any high winds or high surf, I'd put down a very good CQR or spade, much heavier anchor. So for this stockless anchor, um, I first took it and took a steel brush to it, these two steel brushes, and uh, knocked all the cobwebs off and the, the big flakes of rust and started to see it look shiny, started to look good. Um, and I gave it a rinse off with a hose. Then I put it in a vinegar bath with about one and a half cups of this cleaning vinegar and a gallon of water, I'd say. And uh, what I'm gonna do is leave it for 24 hours. And then uh, let's check back in on it after those 24 hours. You know, I was thinking about that static display I did for Destroyer Squadron 2 in the Navy. And uh, when we were done, it looked really good. I know in this picture, it's just a dirt plot, but we planted some uh, bushes and flowers and stuff. And uh, I kind of thought, you know, someday I'll, I'll bring my kids back here and I'll, I'll show them, hey, this is something you can visually see that your father did. And... I looked it up in satellite images from back then, 2010. You can clearly see if you look closely, the two white circles are the um, white bollards, the anchors on the other side. Then here's an image um, from this year, satellite image. They tore the damn building down. Um, they put in an overpass. They turned it into a parking lot. Nothing sacred. All right, but anyway, it's the next day. Um, it's only about 13 hours later, but 
I didn't really feel like waiting. Here's the anchor. Let's see how it did. I don't see actually any rust flakes in the water. The water is a little brown. If I pour some of this clean vinegar in here, let's see what we can do. Got a little green scrubbing pad here. You can see with just a couple minutes of rubbing on here, it did get off a good amount. There's some rust here. And uh, I gave it a quick rinse off with the hose. I'm wondering if I should have soaked it in pure vinegar instead of diluted. And actually, I was a little impatient. I didn't wait 24 hours. It's just been about 13 hours. All right, let's give it, give it a rinse off. Much better. This is Paul R. Salomon, Detroit, Michigan, 20 pounds. Only took a couple minutes to dry in the sun. Looks like it had some kind of zinc coating or maybe silver spray paint. Do the primer. All right, I put the anchor up on three nails on pieces of wood. And next I'm gonna put on the top coat, which is this Rust-Oleum High Performance Enamel. Oh, it's kind of a chrome look. Wasn't really expecting that, but It'll do the job. All right, that's the first coat on. Looks pretty good, nice and shiny. And what I'm gonna do is three coats. It says coat within one hour or after 24 hours, so I'll put on three. All right, paint has dried. We are all done. This little anchor is ready for service. Thanks for watching, everyone. Mr. Bordell, let's make all preparations for getting on the way. That guy sure likes to carry things. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Home. Get back to your station, or I'll have you shot for a mutineer! Well, shoot something! <laughs>